Hey guys, so I'm gonna do a quick little video here on one stage versus two stage packing of reserves. And this is a technique that can work with all reserves. It can be a round, square, regalo, base, anything you want. The technique works for all of them. Uh, most manufacturers often have this one stage style, which is a little more simple. And there's a little more care you have to take with the two stage. But I'll explain at the end of the video why you prefer the two stage. But first, here's the difference. With the one stage, there's a bite of line closest to the bridle that's, that's sealing this closing loop. And what I mean by a bite is it's a loop of line that's taken and held like this. So on a one stage, when you throw the reserve and the bridle gets tight, what happens is the lines pull through this bungee and all four of these flaps open at the same time, exposing the lines and the parachute all at once. With a two stage packing, what I do instead is I'm going to pull the lines out, set them aside gently, and I'm going to take a bite of lines that's right next to the parachute and use that to close three of the flaps. So I may have to take one of the elastics off to give myself a little slack. I'm going to close three of the four flaps, leaving the one that's facing the bridle open, closing these three, taking a bite of line and passing it through this bungee. And anytime you create a bite, there's two important things to note. One is it's really critical that the bite is about two or three finger widths wide because if it was really big, what's possible is that something could pass through the bite so that when it goes to pull through, it gets stuck and you get bag locked, which would prevent the reserve from opening entirely. So really critical that it's two to three finger widths. And the other thing is you want the bungee to be secure enough that the lines aren't going anywhere prematurely, but not so tight that it's possible to pick the reserve up under its own weight. So a good way to test that whenever you're setting a bite is you can make that loop a little bit big and start to try to lift the reserve up and just see that it slides. And then you end up again with your two or three finger widths. And now that I've closed three of the flaps, I can put the lines back in under the fourth flap. And then I can close the fourth flap. And then I'm going to grab the same bungee that I used before, trying to leave this bite in place, pull some slack up, pass it through one of these grommets. And then I'm going to take a bite of line that's closest to the bridle and I'm going to pass it the opposite way as the previous bite. So you see how these are opposing each other? I want to pass the opposite way because if I went the other way, there's a chance that these bites could interfere and lock on themselves, which you can also prevent by again making sure it's nice and small, but it's extra secure to make sure they're facing the opposite direction. And again, we'll go and test to make sure it's not too tight. So the difference here between the first stage where I pulled it and it all opened at once is when you throw this and the bridle first goes tight, what happens is this first flap opens, all the lines spill out, uncoil and get straight. And it's only when all the lines are straight that this second bite opens, allowing the parachute to unfold. And the reason some people like the one stage opening is they like the idea of the parachute opening all at once as they throw it to help speed up the opening. But what I find in practice is it's very similar to when you ground handle your glider that the parachute doesn't actually open until the lines get tight. And by staying in the bag, it allows the parachute to retain its momentum, get away from you, straighten all the lines. And then the parachute opens really fast all at once, which gives it less of a window to get caught by the glider as opposed to if it opens all at once and it's uh, big and inflating, it can lose its momentum and get caught more easily. So I'll show a video at, at the end of this showing just how fast this can open, even what staying in the bag until the very end. So again, I'm going to close this. All my lines are on top, close that flap, grab my bungee, pass it through the grommets, take my bite from the opposite direction, pull it through, check the tension to make sure it's not too tight, get it two to three finger widths facing the opposite direction, and then you're all done ready to reinstall.
people tend to get really anxious about folding the reserve. And actually, as long as it fits in the bag and you didn't pack it with a line over or anything and the bungee is not too tight, it's really this part that's the most critical. So when you go to install it in the harness, you wanna make sure that your handle is attached to the edge of the bag, not this center point, which you would use for a front mount. And you wanna make sure when it goes in this mailbox style harness slot, that this length of the handle is long side out. So it should go in like this. If I put it in upside down like this, when you go to pull the handle, you may not have enough slack to disengage the pins and it'll be stuck in the harness. So make sure you put it handle long side out. Then you also want to put the smooth side facing up towards the seat board so that it slides out easily and it has less tendency to wedge in the slot. So I'm going to put the smooth side in the harness compartment, long side of the handle out, first coil the excess bridle and lines into that slot first, reserve goes in, smooth side up, handle side out, tucks in, and then you're just going to close it depending on how your specific harness works with the pins. That's all there is to it.